And we started the team because we wanted to um, we wanted to spread good ideas to um, spread across borders and language and languages in different contexts. And last year we became really interested in what's happening in Seoul City and wanted to explore the changes that we were seeing in our own hometown. Um, so we took part in uh, social frontier research um, to think about the new ways that the Seoul City is engaging with its citizens um, to make social change. Um, but before going any further, I must say some thank yous. Um, I would like to thank Six and Collaborate and the Renkian Foundation for setting this wonderful um, festival. And it's a, it has been a very um, amazing journey for us um, because um, it has been a very exciting experience working with the three um, city officers from Seoul City um, who are our speakers today. Um, Seoul City has sent um, three amazing employees to on second and to London. Um, and they um, are part of a two-year program um, that allows civil servants to work in the social sector in another country um, to gain hands-on experience. Um, so we have Daniel. <laughs> He's currently at six, and he used to be at NESCA um, last year. And Sonne is based in social life at the moment, but last year she was based at Young Foundation. And we have Young. <laughs> and Young is currently, currently based in locality. Um, so the process of making this session has been very unique and also very unusual because I think if we were all living in Seoul City, this session, this session like this would have never happened. Um, so we have a Korean social innovation group, a monthly meetup um, in London, and the group is consisted of civil servants, students, investors, um, academics, and people working in social sectors. And we had one meeting one day, and Daniel suggested um, that we collaborate to put the session um, uh, forward. And, and with a bit of nudge from uh, the 16, and um, with uh, the help of our friends who connected us to GLA and locality, um, here we are today. Um, and thank you, Robin, for um, who be chairing um, this discussion today. But before, we, uh, before I introduce the agenda today, I just wanted to have a chance to um, have a chat between and introduce each other to your neighbors. And um, since today is the last day of the Unusual Suspects Festival, I, I know that you've been to other sessions throughout the week. And I wanted to give you maybe two minutes to talk about um, the experiences that you've had and what Unusual Suspects you've met um, this week. Two minutes. <laughs>
So, I hope you had an exciting kind of conversation with your neighbors. Um, and today we want to share with you the story of Soul City. So it's a, it's a kind of pleasure to share with you what's going on in Soul City, as there are very exciting things happening in my own uh, hometown. Um, there is a social innovation mayor who took office uh, two years ago, um, who has been re-elected for a second term this year. Um, his name is Won Soon Park, and he's been sparking kind of radical changes in Seoul City, um, very um, from bottom up. And he's kind of trying to make Seoul City embrace citizen engagement and open dialogue in the policy making process. So you can see that even in his ele election slogan, uh, when he became the mayor, um, he wanted to become the mayor who changes the everyday lives of citizens. And he declared that I'm not the mayor, citizens are mayors. Um, and also he encouraged various kinds of citizen engagement as a, as a way of sparking social innovation. Um, he's very new to politics. Um, before um, becoming the mayor, he was a human rights lawyer and uh, he called himself social designer. And he set up a lot of organizations including Beautiful Foundation, Beautiful Store, which is um, an initiative based on Oxfam, and Hope Institute, which is a social innovation center. Um, so it's very interesting to see how a civic leader, what, what happens when a civic leader goes into government, what, what, what happens. Um, so his philosophy was reflected very early on in his election campaign. So he used social media to communicate and listen to the needs of the voter. And his election team, um, campaign team, was able to raise 1.5 billion won. That's, um, 900,000 uh, 900, um, pounds on the first day of his official campaign, only through small donations from Facebook and Twitter. And um, they were able to mobilize maybe 2,000 people that day. Um, and this year's um, election campaign, Mr. Park carried a GPS tracker on his rucksack, in his rucksack, so that the citizens could search and track his, track him. Where, where he is by using a website called findonesoon.com <laughs> and I kind of like will find Waldo <laughs> um, to find him and to have conversation with him on the ground. And he had a campaign um, camp called Halibi Camp where uh, the camp was open to all the citizens and, and they were welcome to use the space. So when Mr. Park became the mayor, he radically changed the city um, um, how the city worked with its citizens, and he wanted the city to become the platform for a change. And he declared Seoul City as a sharing city, and he began sharing the spaces that Seoul City had, um, and uh, a lot of its resources as well. And so innovation, Social Innovation Bureau was set up within the city government, and also a social innovation cluster called Social Innovation Park was set up. So these new structures that are enabling collaboration between city government and the civic sector is what makes um, Seoul City very, very interesting at the moment. Um, yeah. So we have three speakers today. Um, we have Daniel, who will be presenting how Seoul City is changing the way it communicates with citizens um, to inform city policies. Um, and it has changed from a one-way dialogue to a two-way dialogue. And second, Yao will be talking about how Seoul City is trying to restore social capital and community relationship through a neighborhood-based approach. And third, Sunne will be talking about participatory budgeting system in the Seoul City and how the city is enabling citizen-led budget decisions. And then we'll have a more deeper um, panel discussion with Robin as our chair, um, Christine Winfield from GLA, um, Crystal Juring from um, Locality and John Wan Kim from Spread Eye will join us. Um, and we hope to learn from all of you, your experiences as well, in your context and in your own field during the discussion. So feel free to ask questions and comment um, during the discussion. But before we start with the presentations, I would like to invite um, Mr. Hyung Woo Bae from Social Innovation Bureau and Seoul City um, to the stage. He's flown 8,852 kilometers <laughs> to be here today at the Unusual Suspects Festival. And he'll be sharing briefly about the overall changes that are happening in Seoul.
to the role of social innovation in creating a vibrant and harmonious society. What kind of leadership and governance, governance should the local government try to solve the question? I'm sure that we have heard of the saying, think globally, act locally. Social innovation begins with the small things. It may begin small, but the impact is so great. In Seoul, even the smallest actions and efforts made by the citizens mean a great deal. Because it is those small actions and efforts that come together to bring about social innovation in our city. What Seoul does as a local government is to create and support on environment or ecosystem in which citizens can actively take part in the process of making innovative policies. And I believe this can directly impact their neighborhoods, uh, communities, and for the world, the entire world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bay. Um, can I invite Daniel Han, or Pijin Han, um, to the stage? And he'll be exploring um, how South City is changing the way it engages with its citizens um, through different kind of diverse um, tools. Um, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pajan. Thank Daniel. I'm working for social innovation change as a second lead. Uh, one, of, <laughs> one of our uh, organizers for the festival. And Luis, my director, and yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my, uh, our presentation. Uh, I'd like to start from a few words. The mayor of us has been driving the listening policy, so called BDR policy. Uh, this is the heart of people-oriented social innovation work, which the Seoul City focuses on right now, as Mr. Say introduced before. You, you can see a real picture next to the front of the gate of City Hall. He says in Korean, listen until people open their minds. And in front of the, the video picture, there is a big ear drum. Uh, when a passerby passes this sculpture, he speaks to the person and invites her or him to express their opinions or complain to the city hall. And when you shout, your voices are recorded and broadcast to the basement of the city hall. If you have a chance to visit Seoul, uh, try once and you have a complaint to and recently, a huge electric board was installed on the side of a city hall building, which shows text messages from people who want to freely express their thoughts on current issues uh, almost in real time. This is intended to listen small voices given from a little girl. Uh, these three symbols I introduced to uh, show how the Seoul government uh, tried to create uh, a new culture of listening to the people. And this is uh, what I'm going to introduce to you. And first, uh, on, the, on the, this listening policy, the many communication tools were created recently. And there are various, both online and offline tools. Uh, the Seoul government developed online tools with several purposes. The first, we offer tools for citizens to talk to government anytime, anywhere. And second, these tools are used to reach out diverse group of people uh, compared to the offline speaking. And then, lastly, the city government provides first response and analyze 
citizen request and provide feedback. Then. So social media center is a good example of this online tool. Uh, people can suggest ideas and complain through Twitter. And when tweets are received, they are categorized and sent to the relevant divisions. And the division reply back to the citizen. Anybody can see how this communication go on on the website. Uh, this is the platform, online platform, uh, Mr. Be already introduced. Uh, there are many uh, debates or uh, ideas. And the online tools are very fast, but there is a limit to discuss details in order to implement ideas. So offline meetings can help the whole government to discuss pros and cons of each idea from various stakeholders. I encourage you to show you Changchek Forum, a town hall meeting, which is becoming a core stage of within Seoul city policy development process. Changchek is a new world combining two Korean words listening and policy. So yeah, we are we are part of listening and policy so many times. And the difference from the previous meeting is that in the past, this kind of meeting were carried out at the final stages of policy making. So people's opinion made no difference in the uh, major direction. However, a Chongche forum takes place at early stages of policy making. So, provide space for citizens to propose ideas and the, the, the room for, provide room for agenda setting, so it's different. The second offline tool is mobile mayor office, which is held where there are pending issues. The mayor stays one day or even one week depending on the issues, and other decision makers, including the head of the borough, MPs, and local councillors also visit the site. And the most important stakeholders, people living around there, uh, gather and discuss with the uh, other stakeholders until they find the solution. <coughs> Meanwhile, mayor does every work in the area until the issue is fully discussed. There. That's why this is called the mobile mayor office. Uh, not only these online and offline tools, whole government has many different tools based on the three principles. First one is two-way dialogue between people and city government. And second, city tries to open up entire policy making process. And third principle is uh, city government allows any, any citizen to use communication channels, uh, which is how government owns such as websites and underground billboard and so on. So under, under this principle of communication, uh, it's uh, the whole communication tools uh, we have now. And we try to make sure that these tools support the communication principle. And among them, the online broadcasting shows mobile mail office activities or Changche Forum in real time. So, uh, let me introduce a case of which was started by a citizen's proposal. It's a night bus. A power has an affordable transporting system. We can get to anywhere with one ton. It's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but there was no tra public transportation at night. So a person uh, tweeted uh, and suggested uh, having making a uh, light bus, and many people replied uh, positively. And, but the, until then, the whole government could not identify their hidden needs. The interesting thing is that we used the big data to determine uh, the optimal bus route. Actually, uh, it is from the mobile phone data from people. Uh, 
Uh, when people test or call make a call, we can see uh, where they are, and we can assume that uh, they are heading for their billing address. So under, under this assumption, the three billion call data was analyzed. And finally, eight possibilities were uh, determined. And it was very successful. People are very happy with uh, this night bus. And I'd like to introduce some uh, values, I think. First, uh, these communication tools help the soul to soul government to identify invisible and unexpected needs, as I introduced the uh, uh, night bus example. Uh, it's not revealed by policy makers, but by uh, citizens themselves. And secondly, these communication tools help to build trust between people and city government. And by creating innovative solutions, people's satisfaction has increased um, a lot. Even though people's suggestion was not accepted, people were happy because they, they, uh, they could talk to the policy makers and people began to understand why their opinions are not accepted. So, the, uh, the final one is about the inside of Seoul City Hall. Uh, by widening interface of contact with the citizens, civil servants have to think innovative solutions to satisfy different stakeholders. And often, the innovative suggestions were made by diverse, source, diverse sources of different stakeholders. And we are learning how to reconcile different <coughs> suggestions and opinion to make different uh, groups satisfied. By doing so, I believe the overall innovative capacity inside of the city hall has dramatically improved for a short time. Uh, there are many challenges as well. As you can imagine, listening to people involves a lot of work for civil servants. Yeah. We should hear more, which means uh, we should spend more time on organizing meetings and categorizing citizens' opinions. And this is a pending issue among civil servants in Seoul. And the second one is that we need to encourage citizen participation uh, in implementation and the monitoring process. Uh, we are, our engagement too, is relatively focusing on generating ideas and uh, formulate agenda setting. So this engagement of uh, the implementation and monitoring is needed. And the range of participants is also uh, important because uh, the people who have online tools are relatively likely to participate more. And thank you for listening. And feel free to contact me when you need to collaborate with us. Thank you, Dario, Fijin. Uh, what I think is really interesting about the big year policy or the listening policy um, is the range of tools that the Seoul City has. It's countless, there's a lot of tools. But what it does is it expands the interaction area between government and citizens. And um, I think um, it, this is really important because I think Korea has a, a history of authoritarian government and our history of democracy has been relatively short. And it's very difficult for us to express and this has given um, confidence to the citizens to express what their ideas are and allow kind of diversity of ideas and viewpoints to be put forward. Um, but now we have a very different approach um, from uh, Yongwu. Um, a place-based approach. Um, we'll be looking at how Seoul City is enabling, enabling citizens to collaborate and be, build social capital within their own neighborhood. Um, we looked at how Seoul City is helping their communities to thrive and make changes in their own area. I'm very happy to talk about very, a bit unusual but very interesting changes happening in Seoul City right now. Uh, I think uh, uh, some of you already very, very well know about Seoul City and South Korea, but I, I hope that some of you only heard about North Korea or Kim Jong maybe. So I just don't know a little bit what happened in Korea.
was an um, interesting and successful case of Philip coming to put it in so this This kind of apartment complex is the most common way, common style of residence in Seoul City. More than half of Seoul citizens live in this kind of apartment complex. And usually people living in apartment complex are not, they usually do not, do not uh, care much about their neighbors. Uh, I also lived in this kind of apartment complex for about six years in, when I was in Seoul. But I didn't even know the name of my neighbor. So be shame. But this lovely group of people has succeeded to build a solid trust and relationship by various experiments and Seoul City government supported their project. <coughs> uh, they started to, uh, to meet frequently to talk about how can they make remodel or spare space of their gender building to small study rooms like this. They, all of them were very afraid of their, the safety and health of their children. And the education of their children are most common and important needs of the community. And they are managing different kinds of lectures inside of their apartment complex so they can easily go to the lecture and learn various programs. And they also managing a uh, social enterprise called the EM. Uh, EM stands for effective microorganism. So they can sell the EM and they can make a profit by selling EM solution and they decompose the, the kitchen waste by this machine to variable organic uh, compost. And Seoul City government uh, gave them <coughs> about 30,000 of grants to set up this uh, enterprise. Busanan Village is uh, another very interesting example of village uh, community project in Seoul City. The population Population density of Seoul City is very high. It's uh, three times higher than London and eight times higher than Rome. So, some 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 town, in some town, it's very hard to change the spare, uh, to find uh, enough to open space or spare space to organize their community access. So, but uh, a group of young and young residents and artists. Developed a very uh, interesting program, program by their creative ideas. Like this band uh, on the room. And this lovely group of <laughs> young residents changed the, the uh, gloomy mood of the deprived area into a very attractive place for tourists and young, young people. And they also succeeded to provide a job, their job opportunity by themselves. This is, is a, a stairway market. They opened a, a market on a narrow and steep stairway in Usadan village. So it's very popular and I think the first time to open a community market in the stairway, maybe in Seoul, maybe in Korea, or over the world, I think. <laughs> Have you ever seen like it? No. <laughs> and they also opened a uh, hundred of interesting uh, art stores and hand handicraft stores along the narrow street of the Usadan village. So it's very popular. So many people uh, 
maximize their talent and hand skill in the Usadan village. So uh, every now in more than 3,000 3, people visit the Usadan village every weekend. It, it, it became very popular to young people and very trendy people. I think we can find the reason why we are trying to collaborate with our citizens by this kind of example. We realize that the biggest asset Seoul government has is the talent and creative ideas from the citizens. So we believe that we can maximize our capability by cooperating, co cooperating with uh, our citizens in Bello and Smartware. But we still have a lot of challenges to solve, like uh, to issue the diversity of customers and reduce the paper. <laughs> Every ship is very annoying for the paper. And tension between the uh, residents and I think the sustainability is the most important thing we need to ensure. And we also need to build a trust <coughs> with our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Nabu. Um, I just wanted to say that um, the community support policy has been the, one of the very controversial subjects um, during the re-election this year. Um, as it's not about building physical buildings, uh, which a lot of previous mayors have done, um, it's about building intangible stuff and social ties and um, helping people to help each other. And it's something that you can't really measure or see. But um, Mayor Park sees that these relationships that you build within a place uh, or a neighborhood has effect on the long-term resilience of the Korean society. And I think maybe it's reflected in his um, re winning the re-election by uh, landslide winning. Um, now we have Sonne, and she'll talk about participatory budgeting in Seoul City and um, how Seoul City is shifting the way um, a portion of city budget is decided.
citizens those suggest and decide the permanent deposit by themselves. Every, every year, citizens can suggest their business idea within 30 million pounds per year. Then, I will, I will explain the process step by step. First step is the receiving citizen proposal. Citizens present in the whole city can propose their ideas individually or in groups through the internet or email or they can also visit in the whole city. But the business plan is close to their lives and their needs. There are eight categories like park or construction or private or the welfare or the, or the uh, child care, so on. This year, citizens suggested those 1,530 proposals. The second stage, proposal suggestions are selected by the civil budget committee. There is civil service, civil budget committee in Seoul, consists of 250 citizen members. They all selected every year, and they are going to the subcommittee to review and examine the proposal for business. And all the 30% of the agreement of the all members are submitted to the final voting dates by citizens. They also uh, selected the 506 proposals from the original suggestion. Next, this, this process is a real big decision by citizens. This picture is the polling days by citizens. We hold a citizen assembly of, of around 2,500 2, citizen people. They are all selected by randomly com computer. Uh, considering region, or age, and uh, gender. Uh, you can imagine that all barriers have uh, at least 100 people as uh, members. This picture is shown the uh, polling days, the final polling days. Uh, uh, applicants explain to the citizens to get a support from citizens. In, the, in, in, in July, the, at the, city, at the city assembly, they select their 352 proposals by them. And the final stage, selected projects are carried out by Seoul City Department. Who is he? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, he can be. But he is the civil servant of the sound. He's a little bit of a sober crowd. Our office is like that all the time. <laughs> this picture it shows the example of the selected business. The first case is the, the making of paths, the, the mountain road, to uh, access to easily to the uh, disabled. And the second is the, the big, uh, building of the uh, study center for low income in families. And the other is the, uh, repairing all the old cars. And extending the first work in the school zone. And uh, the last is uh, the make a space for the craft net. This is the hand, uh, you know, Fox Town is the really famous for the handbag chairs. Through this system, uh, we, we are able to identify the needs of the citizens. And the, usually, the citizens are focused on the safety and the relationships and the, the village community, so on. Then, what is the value of this system? Uh, shall, shall we compare the before and the after? Before, citizens were unable to participate in the public policies entirely. They only can 
by the fetal assembly, they can suggest <laughs> indirectly. But now, citizen can influence on the, the whole citizen's policies directly. The way of the making, uh, making voice of citizens change the from indirect to direct. Like, uh, before, uh, we are, our city officers can't understand the small need and of the citizen. But uh, through this system, we can understand and identify what, what is their need. And next, uh, through these systems, uh, the democratic process, the sole government policies was opened and it became the transparency. So citizens have a claim uh, to the sole citizen policies and they have confidence and trust, trust to the sole government. And uh, finally, we can make customize the policy system for the citizens. Uh, now we can understand uh, what is their need in TTR. So what I call, I want to say, uh, spreadsheet approach for the citizens. But there are another voice. There are some limitations. The problem of civil representation. The, all the time, the, the interested people uh, join this system. So the, sometimes there are lots of similar proposals by the limited participants. And uh, someone said uh, it can be undermining the right of the city assembly to the deliberate on uh, It can be duplicate or overlap. So it can be waste of time or waste of project. And the budget is limited within a certain million pounds per year. So the visit scaling can't be scaling up. It can be a little small scale business. The citizen budget system has started just two years ago. Although there are some voices or challenges, I want to emphasize it. The satisfactory of the citizens are uh, really growing up, and the relationship between the citizens and the government is uh, really intimacy and because became a development. So it's really good system. Who's he? <laughs> he was a soul civil servant. <laughs> he is listening to the voices of the citizens. Like this. Our thought government will always try to meet the demand of the citizens. And the source innovation will be continued. Thank you. Thank you, Shale. Um, I think the portion of the budget may be small, but um, I think what's interesting for me is to see how Mayor Park's message of citizens are mayors are translated into uh, what the city is doing in terms of budgeting.